Sprinkler Systems Before diving in the sprinkler system, let us go through some basic information related to firefighting. The Fire Triangle The Fire Triangle is a scientific principle that is important for all people to be aware of. Understanding how fires sustain themselves is essential background information in situations where you may have to use fire safety equipment. The fire triangle, or combustion triangle, is the three components needed to ignite and sustain a fire. The three ingredients of a fire triangle are Heat, fuel and oxygen. First, a source of heat is required for ignition to occur, and different materials have different flash points. Flash point is the lowest temperature at which the material ignites. Second, a fire cannot begin if there is no material to burn. Homes and businesses are full of flammable materials, such as paper, oil, wood, and fabrics. Any of these can serve as a fuel for a fire. Third, to sustain the combustion reaction, oxygen is needed, as it reacts with the burning fuel to release heat and CO2. Earth's atmosphere consists of 21% oxygen, so there is plenty available to trigger a fire if the other two components are present. Fire blankets and certain fire extinguishers remove the oxygen side of the triangle by removing it or displacing it, causing suffocation, and thereby ceasing the combustion reaction. So, here are some facts about the fire triangle that we should keep in mind. Normal air contains 21% oxygen. Fuel may also contain oxygen. Heat sources include the sun, hot surfaces, sparks, friction, and electrical energy. Fuel sources can be a solid, liquid, or gas. Firefighting systems are classified either manual or automatic. Manual firefighting systems include extinguishers, fire cabinets, Siamese connection, and fire hydrants. These requires the physical intervention of manpower to fight the fire. Automatic system, as its name says, fights the fire automatically without the intervention of human being, and that what a sprinkler system do. Here is a schematic diagram of the system components. Usually both systems exist in all buildings to form a competent firefighting system matching the NFPA standards. So, in any building, the system consists of three basic parts. A large store of water in tanks, either underground or on top of the building, called fire storage tanks. A specialized pumping system, this usually includes three types of pumps, jockey pump, electric pump, and diesel pump. You can refer to my video about fire pumping system for more info. A large network of pipes ending in either hydrants or sprinklers, nearly all buildings require both of these systems. Sprinkler systems. When it comes to the sprinkler head itself, the four most common styles of sprinklers are the standard spray upright, standard spray pendant, sidewall sprinkler, concealed sprinkler head. Nearly all fire sprinklers are composed of the same components. A sealing assembly or plug that prevents water from escaping. A heat-sensitive element that allows water to flow at a given temperature. A deflector that distributes water effectively, and a frame. The sprinkler's temperature rating is the temperature at which the sprinkler will activate. Options range from 135 to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. These ratings can be identified by the color of the liquid inside the bulb in the case of glass bulb sprinklers. The selection is taken from NFPA 13 Table 7241 based on the hazard class for the structure that the fire sprinkler system is protecting. Upright Sprinkler Head Upright fire sprinklers spray water upward to a concave deflector, like an umbrella, producing a dome-shaped spray pattern. Rather than descending through the ceiling, these sprinkler heads are usually mounted on pipes just below the ceiling. Upright sprinkler heads are efficient at dispersing water between obstructions. Thus, they are frequently used for rooms that are inaccessible, such as mechanical rooms and in warehouses and industrial spaces. They are also often applied in structures with open ceilings. The Pendant Fire Sprinkler Head It is the most common type that you will see. Pendant sprinkler heads descend from the ceiling with a convex, circular, gap deflector plate on the bottom. When the sprinkler heads activate, they send a stream of water downward onto their deflectors, which then disperse the water widely, side to side, throughout the room in a conical pattern. Sidewall sprinkler heads Protrude horizontally out of the wall parallel to the floor, rather than descending from the ceiling or mounted on a pipe pointing upward. Sidewall sprinklers are ideal for small spaces, such as hallways, spaces with obstructions, and where ceiling piping is not available. Concealed sprinkler head 
This heat-sensitive plate detaches at temperatures roughly 20 degrees lower than the fire sprinkler head, allowing the concealed sprinkler's deflector to drop and the head to activate. Now we have covered the most common sprinkler head types, let's go ahead and discover the fire sprinkler system types. There are four main types of systems. Wet pipe system, dry pipe system, pre-action system, and deluge system. Wet pipe sprinkler systems. Here are the components of a wet sprinkler system. In addition to the water supply, piping, and sprinklers, these systems have backflow prevention device, control valve, main drain, fire department connection, water flow alarm. Wet pipe sprinkler systems always contain water in the riser and piping. As soon as a sprinkler head activates due to the heat of a fire, water is immediately discharged through the open head. Dry pipe fire sprinkler systems. Dry pipe systems are very similar to wet pipe systems with one major difference. The pipe is not constantly filled with water. Instead, the water is held behind a dry pipe valve usually some distance away from where the sprinklers are located. Like a wet pipe system, when the temperature at the ceiling becomes hot enough, the glass bulb or fusible link of the sprinkler breaks. However, in this case, water isn't immediately available because the pipe is not water filled. Instead, air is released from the now open sprinkler head. This creates a drop in pressure causing the dry pipe valve to open and water to fill the system. Water will then flow from the open sprinkler head. Since there is a delay between sprinkler operation and water flow, the size of dry pipe systems is limited. The size limitation is intended to minimize the amount of time water delivery is delayed. A dry pipe system is a great option for unconditioned spaces or locations where the temperature of the space cannot be guaranteed to be high enough to prevent water in the system from freezing. Pre-action system. A pre-action type sprinkler system employs the basic concept of a dry pipe system in that the sprinklers are closed and water is not normally contained within the pipes. One difference, however, is how water is admitted to the system. Water introduction into the system's piping is initiated by opening of a normally closed, mechanically latched valve known as a pre-action valve. Means of operating the pre-action valve depends on which of the three types of pre-action systems, non-interlock, single interlock or double interlock, is installed. Pre-action valve operation is dependent upon one or two of the following events occurring, sprinkler activation and detection device activation. A non-interlock system requires only one of either event to occur before water is admitted into the system. A single interlock system is activated only upon the event of detection device activation. However, in a double interlock system, the two separate events must happen before water is admitted into the system, sprinkler activation and detection device activation. Deluge systems are similar to pre-action systems in that they use another type of detection for operation. However, the biggest difference is that deluge systems use open sprinklers or nozzles. Instead of getting water flow from individual heads that have operated, once water fills the system, water will flow from every sprinkler head. Much like a pre-action system, a deluge valve will keep water from filling the system until the operation of another type of detection system, such as smoke detection. Once the detection system is activated, water not only fills the system, but flows from the open sprinklers or nozzles. An important consideration in the selection of the type of sprinkler system is the level of hazard being protected. If protecting an area of very high hazard, such as aircraft hangars, a deluge system may be the most suitable. Automatic sprinkler system design. The layout of fire sprinkler systems is usually one of the following. Tree sprinkler system. It is the normal design system and it consists of main pipeline with branches on both left side and right side. Grid sprinkler system. A sprinkler system in which parallel cross mains are connected by multiple branch lines. Looped sprinkler system. A sprinkler system in which multiple cross mains are tied together so as to provide two paths for water to flow to an operating sprinkler and branch lines are not tied together. The maximum area of coverage per sprinkler head depends on hazard classification and sprinkler mounting orientation, that is, sidewall or overhead. Sprinkler head spacing. The table below shows sprinkler spacing requirements based on NFPA 13. For example, in a light hazard office area, 
The maximum coverage area per sprinkler head is 200 square feet, and the maximum design spacing between sprinklers is 15 feet. The maximum distance of sprinkler head from wall is half of the maximum distance between sprinkler heads. Minimum distance between sprinklers is typically 6 feet. Let us take an example in office area of 90 by 60 feet. Assume we want to design a tree sprinkler system. Let us go ahead and lay out the piping system and sprinkler heads. Being a light hazard, the maximum spacing between sprinklers is 15 feet. The distance between sprinklers and walls is no more than half than the distance between sprinklers. The water demand for firefighting sprinkler systems shall be determined by either the pipe schedule method or the hydraulic calculation method. According to NFPA 13, pipe schedule system is defined as sprinkler system in which the pipe sizing is selected from a schedule that is determined by the occupancy classification and in which a given number of sprinklers are allowed to be supplied from specific sizes of pipe. Since our space is considered light hazard and having no more than two sprinkler heads on each branch, then the size of all branches is one inch. For the main line, always start from the end. This portion is feeding four sprinkler heads, then its size should be one and half inches. This portion is feeding eight sprinkler heads, then its size should be two inches. And all the rest are two and half inches because the number of sprinkler heads is more than 10 and less than 30. Now, what is the minimum water supply requirements for pipe schedule systems? The table below summarizes the minimum water flow rate, residual pressure, and duration of pipe schedule systems. Therefore, 500 GPM multiplied by 30 minutes means a minimum of 15,000 gallons water tank shall be constructed. A breakout of a floor control riser assembly. The following is a full arrangement for a combination standpipe sprinkler riser where high pressures necessitate a pressure reducing valve at each level. While every element in this specific arrangement is certainly not a necessity on every project, here's some considerations that go into the requirements and considerations for a layout like this. Auxiliary drain valve. Permits faster draining of system, as opposed to only draining inspector's test valve. Check valve. Can help reduce false water flow alarms on floor where sprinklers have not activated. Drain pipe. Size, 3 quarter inch for 2 inch system pipe. 1 and quarter inch for 2 and half to 3 and half system pipe, or 2 inch for 4 inch system pipe. Drain valve. Minimum size, 3 quarter inch for 5 to 50 gallon system, 1 inch for above 50 gallon system. Drain riser. Discharge must be to outside or drain capable of handling the flow. Size must be at least one pipe size larger than the largest drain connection tying into it. Inspector's test must be accessible and must discharge outside or to a drain capable of handling flow. Must be downstream of water flow alarm. Pressure gauge. Required at each floor control valve. Pressure reducing valve. Provided to reduce the system pressure such that the working pressure will not exceed a standard 175 PSI listed pressure of the sprinklers, piping, and fittings. PRVs can also be used to limit the system pressure to higher amounts when pressures are allowed to exceed 175 PSI. Control valve for entire riser is required to permit isolating a riser without interrupting other systems. Size of minimum 4 inch, unless hydraulically calculated to permit smaller size. Sight glass enables easy verification of water flow for inspector's test. Floor control valve. Must be accessible, electrically supervised or locked, Signage must be provided and shall be tested annually. Water flow switch is used in wet sprinkler systems to detect the flow of water and to send an alarm signal. 